Silence. There comes a time when silence is betrayal by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Today, I want you guys to know what human trafficking is. I want you to let yourself feel it. And I want you to know that you can do something about it. So as a group, as a collective here today, I want us to focus on being present and being here, right where we are. And I want you to let yourself feel these things I'm about to say, and I want you to be real and be focused. So like I said, the first thing I want to do is I want to educate your brains. I want to get you thinking, moving, understanding, and realizing what is going on around you in this world we're in. According to Love 146, which is a leader in human trafficking, not like doing human trafficking, against it, um, human trafficking is defined as any sexual act or labor induced by force, fraud, or coercion. And you ask, how does something like this happen? Is, do they just make bad decisions? Or are they just all these things? But the truth is, is that it's a lie. And I want to demonstrate that for you with something as simple as chocolate. Hey, Becca, I brought you some chocolate, and it's milk chocolate, and I want you to open it up and eat it and tell me, tell me what you think about it. Yeah, look at that. Nice milk Hershey's chocolate. Is it good? Yes. Is it, is it milk chocolate? No. What is that? It is dark chocolate. It is dark chocolate. Okay. Thanks, Bex. You can go sit down. <laughs> so, like I said, I told her I was giving her milk chocolate, but what she received was dark chocolate. And yes, it's still chocolate, but it's a half-truth. These people go in, they're told they're going to get jobs, they're going to have these great things, but when they get there, it's a lie. It's a half-truth. Yes, you're working, but not for what you intended to be. And that is how it all begins, with a lie. And I want to further your mind. I want you to educate you more. There are approximately 27 to 30 million slaves across the globe, according to the Ended Movement. And with these facts, I want to give you a face to put with it. So you don't just think I'm just blurting out these random things to you. I want you to meet Chawazia. Chawazia is from Zambia, which is across the Atlantic Ocean in Africa. And when he was a child growing up, you know, you dream these things of being astronauts, teachers, doctors, whatever it may be. That was his dream, to better himself. So one day, people came to his house and offered him a job with the Boy Scout organization down in South Africa. So like any young person would do that we would do, he reached out and he took that opportunity. But when he got there, when he got to South Africa, it's not what he signed up for. It was not the chocolate he told he was getting. He ended up working on a farm that made him go between Zambia and South Africa and Zambia and South Africa for six months straight, only receiving bread and water as pay. As this continued on, he decided, you know what, I'm going to get out of this. So him and a friend escaped to Cape Town, where they met a police officer, which pointed them to a nonprofit. And at that nonprofit, Chawazia was restored. But sadly for him, he suffers now from PTSD. But the thing that he did is he chose to step out of the silence. He chose to better himself. And so now that I've told you this knowledge and you know what I'm talking about, I want to ask you guys to feel this. As Luke Skywalker says in Star Wars, search your feelings. Chawazi is something that, he is something way far away. He is in Africa. How can something like that be here? How can that be happening in Atlanta? I want to tell you the story of Sarah. Sarah was born here in Atlanta, and her and her family grew up, and around her teens, her brother was killed in a tragic car accident. And I hope you haven't experienced this, but when tragedy happens, it either brings you closer together, or it tears you apart. And in this instance, it tore them apart. So Sarah and her mother went to go live in a trailer in the suburbs of Atlanta. And years go on, and she ends up getting into some trouble and gets a probation officer. But the strange thing is, is that the probation officer was so kind to them. So one day, Sarah's just chilling in her room, and her mom comes in and says, you need to repay that man. As any normal teenager girl, she's like, what? What do you mean, Mom? Like, that's crazy. What are you talking about? And she says, you have to sleep with him. And he came in and took advantage of her. She was 15 years old. And this cycle, this vicious cycle kept happening and going on and going on. And when she was 19, Sarah had a son. And what her mother did is she took that son and she used it against her and said, if you don't go dance, if you don't go sell yourself, if you don't go live those lies, I'm going to take him away from you and you will never see him again. So like any loving mother, she worked to, 
to be with her son, the one whom she loves. Later on, she realizes her son is not in the best condition, so she sends him to his father. And then as she comes to her senses, someone gives her a book that tells her stories of women just like her and of this place called Wellspring Living in Atlanta. So, like Chawazia, Sarah decided to step out of the silence. She chose to get help. She chose to seek restoration. And Sarah is beautiful. There's not that much difference between Chawazia and Sarah. There may be miles apart, but what is over there is what is here. And the ground we stand upon, the streets we walk upon, are the same streets that those enslaved are walking upon. And so, in light of this, and now you've knowing, and I hope you're feeling this, and, and can you feel this? Can you feel the weight of this? Because if you can't feel it, I'm not doing my job. To add to your, your feelings, I want to give you some facts. Atlanta is the number one city in the United States for human trafficking, according to Patch.com. And to add on to that, if you're still not feeling everything, every night 100 girls are exploited in our city. Our city. So, so now that we, we've been educated, and now that we are feeling, what in the world are we supposed to do about this issue? Yes, this is a giant issue. I was preparing for this, and I was talking to my professor, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. And she said, Yo, it's simple. Calm down. Which turns out, it is simple. The one first practical thing we can do is we can vote. Yes, you can vote. I know I don't like to look like I'm 18, but I am. So I can vote, and you can vote too. There's a senator from Tennessee named Bob Coker who is working on passing a bill called End Modern Slavery Act, which is going to set nonprofits around the world that are going to be globally connected to create permanence and end this issue that is going on now. All you have to do is vote. The second practical thing you and I can do is we can raise awareness. Yesterday was Shine a Light on Slavery Day where you had people putting red X's on their hands saying, hey, I'm not going to stand for this. I'm not going to stand for this silence. I'm going to raise my voice. And it's just an Instagram photo. That was trending yesterday on Instagram, in case you didn't know. Newsflash. Um, <laughs> and another, and to add on that thing, another thing we can do, and I think this is the most important thing in our generation, my generation, the upcoming generation, the generations before us, is we need to end the demand. This is not going to stop until the demand is stopped. So you need to teach your boys how to be men, and you need to teach your girls how to be women. And you need to be present exactly where you are. In the wise words of Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. So as, as we close this thing up, one of my favorite professors, Professor Jones, told us, that ignorance will not be tolerated. Well, welcome to the club. You are no longer ignorant. You know the issue, and you know what's going on, and I hope that you have felt this light around us. Do you remember that silence that was so awkward in the beginning? Pretty sure I looked at most of you. <laughs> that silence is what they live in. And that silence is what you and I live in if we choose not to say anything. It is a betrayal. We have the choice, and we have the knowledge, and we have the power to end it. Thank you, guys.